All right, I believe this is the fourth video on the air conditioning on this 2016 Dodge Journey dual evaporator. As you can see, I'm load testing it right now. I have all the doors all the way down wide open. I have front and rear evaporators on full fan speed. And we're into minute, going into minute 10 here. This is the high side pressure. This is the low side pressure. You can hear the clutch cycling every now and then. Listen, you hear that click? That click was the clutch starting its cycle on. Then it cycled off. And you can actually see the clutch cycle on by the low side pressure. But if you compare this recording to some of my other recordings that you've seen many of my videos on, you'll notice the high side is actually affected by the cycling. Have you noticed on some vehicles, it's a nice smooth curve, even when the low side is cycling. Other vehicles, there'll be no cycling at all. It'll be nice and straight on the low side and smooth on the high side. No two vehicles are alike. All vehicles are different. This is why you cannot do no rule of thumb or average. This vehicle is much different than the last few vehicles that I posted videos on, but yet, how can you do a rule of thumb? How can you follow something like the can of AC Pro that will tell you, hey, you just go up to this pressure, this temperature, and you'll be fine. No, you won't be fine. Um, as you can see right here, our superheat and subcooling are never constant. You can't charge by superheat or subcooling because it'll never be constant. You can't go by pressure because it'll never be constant. It's constantly changing. Let's go back to uh, take a look at our temperature. There's our temperature. You can see our temperature. Our outdoor air temperature is being taken right here in front of the condenser and the trans cooler and everything like that. So we're at 60 degrees, 60 degrees right there. And we're coming out 41 degrees out of the dash to a high of 43. So it's constantly going up and down, 43, 41, 43, 41 as the compressor cycles on and off. Let's get a full version here. We could get our air side. So this is our air side. See where it says air side? So you know you're just reading the temperature probes, the inside out of the dash and outside. And here's our refrigerant side where it says refrigerant side. So you only know you're reading superheat subcooling, saturated, uh, your humidity, your dew point. Oh no, dew points up there. Sorry guys, dew points up in uh, air side. So that is this vehicle compared to all that other. Now remember, I know the majority of you in a lot of general shops, there might be four guys, six guys, 12 guys, and the amount of air conditioning jobs that you get exposed to might be one a day or one a week. How can you ever know everything if you have such little exposure to what is normal and what is not normal? This is why I'm posting all these videos of all these different vehicles showing you the wide variety of pressure ranges from the high side to low side. Now look, we're, we're 60 degrees right now and this is normal high side. It goes up to 220 PSI. Let's go back here. Let's see what are, what's our highest. Is it 220? Yeah, 220 PSI is where it goes up to and it goes down to 92 PSI. And it just constantly inside, because the computer on here tells it to do that. There is no rule of thumb. You cannot control it by how much refrigerant you put in there. No guy, none of those YouTube professors with their little whack off cans pretending there's some magical pressure that you keep filling to and it's considered normal. There is no normal. How many times do I have to stress that? Stop listening to the old fogies in this industry. All right. I'm going to get off to the Mercedes and we'll go look and we'll compare what the Mercedes looks like that's over there. Once I finish doing that compared to this Dodge, they're in the same building. It's located right over there. And so we have the same temperatures, the same heat load, the same humidity, the same sun load. There is none because we're inside the building and we're going to do a comparison from one vehicle to the next. All right, guys, I'll catch you later.